my argument uh, is based on one of my paper, which is uh, currently under review entitled uh, Scratching an Itch uh, Through a Boot, a Chinese Iron Theory's Lack of a Predict Power. The title seems to be very provoking, but my writing is very uh, cautious. Uh, in my paper, I raised a puzzle. In the past few years, um, Chinese IR scholars have made a great contribution to the creation of original concepts, theories, and paradigms. But unfortunately, uh, they haven't uh, anticipated the deterioration of the Southern US relations, nor did they foresee the current increasing hostility between China and Western countries. Perhaps uh, a new Cold War is unlikely to truly break out, but it is clear that the Chinese IR theorists cannot foresee developments within the real world. Uh, theory is away from the facts. I'm not saying that they cannot predict, they usually predict, but they cannot predict by using the theory they created. In contrast, the American IR theorists have a stronger ex, uh, explanatory and predictive power, um, uh, such as a defensive realism by Stephen Wald and a state-centered realism by uh, Fari Zakaria. Uh, they can perfectly uh, predict China's state behavior. Uh, um, to answer this question, I put forward some hypotheses, but now I'll directly tell you my findings. Uh, first, Um, Chinese IR theorists rely too much upon inspiration from Confucianism. The concept they use almost all come from Confucianism, but in effect, legalism played a more important role uh, in ancient China. Confucianism uh, and legalism are two sides of the same coin. Confucianism is the rhetoric and the legalism is the logic of the behaviors and the policies. Uh, in political science, there are harmony paradigm and uh, uh, conflict paradigm. The Chinese IR theorists place too much emphasis on the harmony paradigm and they deliberately ignore the conflict paradigm. But at the present, the conflict between China and other countries is growing. So theorizing the conflicts is more necessary and essential. Um, second, uh, China's IR theorists really uh, study how domestic politics uh, influences China's rise and China's foreign policy. In IR study, we have a system level theory and a unit level theory, but the system level theory cannot explain the change in the system itself. However, um, we must explain the change of the system so that is, we must explain what makes China rise. China's rise can be considered as both independent variable or dependent variable. Uh, the reason for China's rise lies in China's domestic politics. Therefore, we must study how the country is governed, how the people is ordered, and how the resources is mobilized. Only in this way, we can know uh, uh, why the gap between China and the United States is narrowing and why the gap between the United States and other countries are uh, growing. Uh, so, um, uh, some Chinese scholars, they, they like to create very complicated concepts, but these concepts cannot explain the dynamic of China's rise. So that is why I make, make, I make a claim that uh, some Chinese IR theorists are scratching an inch uh, through the clothes uh, in Chinese, Ge Xue Sao Yang. Um, Chinese theorists have turned a blind eye to the political system and, or the political institution. But the political system or the political institution is the key independent variable uh, to determine the rise and the fall of a nation. The failure of the Soviet political system led to the collapse of the Union. 
it is not it is not caused by the system level factors, but by domestic factors. Uh, American uh, would rise in 1860s because uh, um, in the Civil War, the liberal democracy defeated the black slavery. The new classical realism explains how the domestic politics change the international system. For example, Farid Zakaria's state-centered re uh, realism, it can not only explain China, but it can also explain America. Uh, international relations scholar uh, should care about the political system, uh, the political institution, or you cannot predict or explain the China's rise and why China's rise lead to a conflict with other states. Fourthly, Chinese IR theorists do not recognize China's uniqueness and China's exceptionalism. Many, econo uh, uh, many economists, social or uh, sociologists, and political science they discuss whether China is unique or exception. Uh, but IR scholars try to avoid such a dis uh, discussion. Indeed, we should try to uh, construct universal theory or the general theory. It means the theory can not only explain China, but can also explain other countries. But we cannot deny that China is indeed very exceptional and very unique, uh, such as the population, the geographic environment, and the different ways of thinking uh, between China and other uh, states. We have similarities, and uh, China should learn from Americans and China should learn from Europeans, but the differences between China and Western countries indeed exist. It cannot be denied. That is a reason of conflict. So, but the Chinese scholars should, um, it, uh, they didn't pay enough attention to it. Um, they should uh, explain this to the colleagues of other countries. That is a real Chinese school. The United States is based on the liberal democracy, but the Chinese people, they abide by the hierarchical order and the great unification. So it is very difficult for them to understand each other. Uh, Chinese theorists try to use concepts based on Chinese culture to explain the state behaviors. But Confucianism can uh, only explain the relationship between people who both believe Confucianism, or uh, it can only explain uh, the, the relationship between people who both affected by the Confucianism. It cannot explain the relation between China and other states. Uh, the concepts such as Tianxia, uh, Gongsheng, uh, Guanxi, and Hehe are also based on recognition of the hierarchical order. This is why they cannot explain the conflicts between China and other states. Finally, Chinese IR theory is more like a philosophy rather than a theory. Uh, although we know that theory uh, has a normative theory and a positive theory. Uh, theory, uh, in general here, Theory is used to explain the relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable. But philosophy only tell you uh, how you see the world. But um, many Chinese IR theorists, they have never defined the independent variable and the dependent variable. So uh, we do not know what they are uh, explaining. And, and also many theorists are away from the policies so they cannot predict the change of the world. Uh, more important, China's IR theorists never seems to uh, pay attention to China's national interest or the interest of conflicts between different countries. In contrast, American IR scholars uh, the emphasizes on the national interest. Uh, uh, realists define what is national interest. Uh, liberals, they say that uh, the uh, the national interest is shaped by in, uh, international institution and values. Uh, the constructivists, they say that um, the national interest and anarchy is what the state make of it. And uh, uh, Karl Marx, uh, the Marxism, uh, they argue that um, the, the, uh, 
the conflict of a uh, class is a more important conflict between countries. But uh, we cannot see that Chinese scholars pay attention to the national interest. In any case, uh, Chinese IR scholars have made a very great effort. They try to theorize China's world order and China's harmonism. But we should also try to use Chinese concept to theorize the conflict, to theorize the national interest, to theorize the state, uh, the state behavior and the, uh, the and the, uh, uh, and the strategy behavior of the nation, and to theorize different ways of thinking between China and other states, uh, and to theorize why China was misunderstood by other countries. In this way, we can better allow people of other countries uh, to, reduce the to reduce the misunderstanding about the China. Okay, that's all. Thank you.